Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour, insanely popular podcast on the Ramsey Networks, and my daughter, she's my co-host today. The phone number here, if you want to talk about your life and your money, the phone number is 888 825 Jennifer starts this hour in Baltimore. Hi, Jennifer, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, what's up? So I um, am actually calling on somebody else's behalf, um, uh, somebody who I think might need some help, um, but maybe not, doesn't think that they do. <laughs> so um, my father is actually going to be inheriting um, close to a million dollars um, in the next couple months. And um, as I've gotten older and, and starting to ask more pointed questions, realizing he really hasn't planned for his retirement. He kind of just assumed he'd be getting enough to retire. And now says, you know, obviously a million dollars isn't as much as he thought. He's not going to be able to live off that. And um, I've just seen a couple generations before me really kind of mismanage money that they've inherited. And I'm hoping to kind of do something different. Hmm. That you're going to do something different or he is? Uh, He says he's open to my recommendations. How old is he, Jennifer? Uh, He's... 65, 67. Okay. Okay. And um, so has he got a bunch of debt? So I've found out that um, he has a HELOC out on the house for about Uh $100,000. He was contributing to a 401k for a while um, while his employer was matching. And when they stopped matching, he stopped contributing. Um, he doesn't have a Roth IRA. Um, he's got some um, dividends and some like stock um, money that he does receive quarterly. Um, and he's got gold squirreled away. Um, but he says, you know, financial planners are parasites and um, high yield savings accounts are scams. Um, and so, you know, he's only now looking into putting things in a trust and maybe getting life insurance and um, getting a will done. Um, but he really kind of has just been banking on getting money. And um, Was he banking really on this to- money from this inheritance? Like, was it from a parent and he was just waiting or yeah, what was so, the... So I yeah, wait, so waited until my, 65 years old before I win. That's sad. Yeah. Um, sad. So when my great-grandmother passed, she had about $24 million in her estate. Um, and that was unfortunately embezzled, um, gambled away a lot by one of my great-uncles. Um, so it also wasn't in a trust. Um, so the government took half. Um, and when my grandparents... Um, we're getting older. They decided their philosophy was the government's just going to take most of it. So we want to try to get rid of it. Um, so they did kind of sporadic payouts. Um, I mean, they were very generous in covering healthcare expenses for uh, myself, for all of my cousins, um, paid for college for their children. And okay, so what um, do you what do you think the best thing to happen today is for your dad? I want him to. Uh, get rid of the HELOC, and I want him to look into investing property or Mm -hmm. some advice of where he could be putting money Mm -hmm. um, other than just, um, you know, he took a $100,000 HELOC out of the house and put it into the stock market. Mm -hmm. Um, And And that's where the dividends came from. Yes. Um, And so, you know, I've been trying to work with my sister. um, Okay, so here's the thing. Number one, I don't think this is going to work. Okay, your dad has a 40 year period of sitting on his cynical hands, doing nothing and waiting on someone else to spoon feed him. The the fact that 65 years old, he's going to jump up and grow a new brain. That's pretty wishful thinking. Yeah. Okay. I wish it wasn't true, but I'm 63 and the chance of me growing a new brain is pretty low. I'm pretty set in my ways. So whatever screwed up about old Dave's probably going to stick that way. So um, I'm, it's just hard to teach an old dog new tricks. I'm one of them. 
and um, you can ask the one sitting next to me. She's tried. <laughs> she's tried to teach me some new tricks, and I hadn't learned a one. I just give suggestions. So I know. Yeah, you do. And that's what Jennifer's trying to do: give suggestions. No, I know. So, but Jennifer, um, yeah. I hear your heart, and I, I really know. do appreciate I, I it. But the reality I, is, I just, our I, parents I, are set in their ways. I'm not picking on your dad. I, I'm I'm probably just like him. I've got to get spiritual gift of cynicism too. But um, I mean, these people are all parasites and scam artists, and no, they're not. That's a dumb butt statement. Okay, they're mm-hmm. not all parasites and scam artists. Now, some financial people are goobers, but there's some goobers in almost any profession, whatever profession he came out of. There's a crook or two hanging out there, too. So uh, but there's good people in the financial world that can sit down. And what he needs is someone to teach him from the financial world, like a good smart investor pro, what's available and what his job is as the manager of a million dollars of God's money. Mm-hmm. You are now that you are now the manager of God's money. Your job is to manage it well, and so get the stupid gold sold, pay off the H, pay off the home equity loan immediately. Learn to live on a budget. Go be a productive citizen. Create something instead of sitting around waiting on someone else. Talk about parasites waiting on someone else to feed you, waiting on <laughs> waiting on mom and dad's dad gum inheritance money to come in. Bless his heart. I mean, I feel sorry for him. He really needs. He's missed out on so much good that life had for him, and I hope for the next 20 years before he dies, he's got some good coming to him where he gets the opportunity to serve others and create something and contribute to society and walk with the dignity that that brings. That's what I want for him. So, but I And that's what you want for him. And I, My problem yeah. is I don't know that he said he's willing to take your input until you tell him something he doesn't like. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? Um, no. Okay. And um, what's been really frustrating is trying to give him advice while stroking his ego. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, I'm not going to stroke his ego. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So um, you can tell. So uh, the, yeah. the thing is this. What I want to help you with is I, I, what you're attempting to do is very kind and very noble. And it is the proper thing to do. But I want to give you realistic expectations because I don't want you to come away from this disappointed that you couldn't do it because I'm going to give you a 5% chance you pull this off because it is you're trying to change other people and until they really want to change you can't do it I do it for a living and I mm-hmm. have had to learn that I don't answer questions that aren't asked when you ask a question I'm going to answer it because that's my duty but I'm not going to just walk up to people and start preaching at them because they don't do nothing they just look at you like, like you know and do nothing so I mean like a friend of mine leased a car drove it up in front of my house the other day and he knows I think leasing cars are stupid, you know, and he drove it up in front of my house. So what am I going to do? Go, you're stupid. No, I said, you know, you know, I didn't great say car. that. I said, great <laughs> car. He didn't ask my opinion, right? He just brought his car over to show it to me. So yeah. great car. But I think, Jennifer, a goal would be if he could sit down with a third party, a Smart yes. Buster Pro, and yes. at least just have an initial meeting to see Heart his options. Teacher. They're there to yes. teach you, that not to be, do it for you. That would be a good goal. But if you can get them there and I then what he chooses step. to do after, I don't know, but... That's yeah. your first step. Go to RamseySolutions.com. Click on Smart Investor. They can help guide him to get his will done. He's got to get that done. He's going to give the government. Talk about giving the government money. Try not doing a will. Oh, my gosh. You let the government be in control of it. No. But please, honey, don't be disappointed if this doesn't all work out. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable Affordable to upgrade your entire home and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply.
Well, you know what happens after the 15th of April, the worst day ever. You know what happens the next day? Awesome stuff. Anything's better than the 15th of April. On the 16th of April, oh, the next day, Rachel's doing. new book will come out. <laughs> so you got to have a little celebration after tax season. I'm glad for where I am. A new book on gratitude for your kiddos. And uh, Lauren did a great job with these. Yes. Lauren Gallegos. Shout and out to her. Just, we love her. And she's just sweet as she can be anyway. But her her illustrations are just I amazing. I mean, this kid. And so this is all about gratitude. The other one was about contentment. I'm yes. glad for what I have. Yep. And this is from glad. This home. Home is where the heart is. That's right. Yeah. So when I was writing it, I was like, how do you teach it? Because grat- contentment, gratitude, generosity are like three principles that are really important for me to teach my kids and just kind of that that emotional side of money. And when you think about gratitude with kids, I'm like, you know, of course, like saying thank you and manners, like all of that is important. But for these little ones, I'm like, when you can start to grasp the things that that can't be taken away from you, you know, this idea of like the love of your family, your home, not just your house, but the home, the environment, when you can start there and that be the foundation at which they learn gratitude, I think is sweet. So the little animals, they go on an adventure to learn that really where they belong is where they where they were. And God specifically has put them in a place for a certain time and the more grateful you are, the more your heart grows. Is the last is the last little sentence of the book, but it's really know. sweet. It's a, it's a it's a great one. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoy it's gonna it. It'll be fun. It comes out a week from now, and uh, you're gonna do a little book tour with it, right? Yes. You're gonna do some signings, a little book reading. Yeah. And... So next week I'm hitting the road. So I'll do some. Um, I'll be in New York doing some media next Tuesday, a week from now, and then fly to Phoenix. So I'll be in Phoenix. Uh, read, you have the read those off. Phoenix I can't see uh, at Desert Ridge, Barnes and Noble, from one to two in the afternoon, doing a signing on and Wednesday. a book. We're going to read the book and then do a signing for the kiddos, mm-hmm. uh, and then over to L.A. on the 18th uh, at, from seven to eight p.m. at the Barnes and Noble at the Grove. Oh, that's a good store. Mm-hmm. I've been to most. I've been to all these stores. Okay, and Dallas uh, Lincoln Park uh, from one to two p.m. Another good store, Barnes and Noble. All these are Barnes and Nobles. Atlanta at Mansell Crossing. Really, that's cool. Four twenty-six. You'll be, be the there. That's a, that's the next week. Yep, yep. And that's from one to two p.m. So, book tours are kind of. Uh, this old, we used to go around and do 40 cities and do signings and do media in every city and all this when we launch a book. And they're kind of out of vogue. Number one, there's not even bookstores left. Um, they're just about gone. Uh, number two, there's a lot of the local media is gone. It's, mm-hmm. it's dried up. And so that methodology of launching and, and marketing a book and going out there is gone. But you're kind of just doing this almost for fun. Yes. Well, I wanted to. I wanted to with the first one. And so the way the timing worked out with holidays didn't. So when this one came out, I was like, I really do. I want to go. Yeah. And and be with people and be with your kids. So make sure to do that. And you can still pre-order uh, for the next week. And if you do that, you'll actually get a link. I'm going to do a story time via Zoom at the end of April for everyone that pre-orders. So at seven o'clock, uh, I'll do a big reading. My kids will be there and all of it. So you oh, can get fun. that link uh, if you pre-order. And so you can go to rachelcruise.com that's for fun. that. Yeah. Well, spoiler alert, I've already been reading it to the grandkids and um, they love it. So yeah. particularly the... Uh, Daniel's little boy, he just, he's like, Papa Dave, you got to read. Papa Dave, you got to read. And we know that, I mean, we know all the data. Uh, parents that read, kids that get read to, th- their IQs go up, their EQs go up. Yeah. Uh, they are most likely going to be readers and writers. And uh, and people that read uh, are, you know, when we're interviewing somebody for a leadership position at Ramsey, um, we ask what books they've read because there are no real leaders that aren't readers. So you, you got to be constantly growing, and the only way to do this is be feeding your brain. And so, I mean, we know all the data on do this, and it kids. starts at this age. It starts with And the it's ones. a short book, parents, so you're welcome for that, too, yeah, because yeah. I hate the bedtime stories. It's <laughs> time just keep going, to go to and you're bed. like, oh, my God. So it's short. It's yeah. short. I mean, they can, th- <laughs> how is it that at four they already know which of the Dr. Zeus's is oh, forever and you, you long? Can't, and you can't forever. skip a page because then they I want mean, it. And, I yeah, do not it. like green eggs and ham, Sam, I am. I'm just saying. All right. Chris is with us. Chris is in Memphis, Tennessee. Hi, Chris. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, good good almost afternoon, y'all. Yeah, yeah it is. How can we now. help? Hey, so my wife and I just found out that we are expecting our second child. Um, we are overjoyed at this. We have oh, a congratulations. two-year-old a little over it. Yay! Um, Awesomeness. And um, we've also just started getting our act together financially. Um, we've been debt-free actually two times in our 
four year marriage and apparently learned nothing. <laughs> and so we're, we're finally at a point I've been binge watching you guys. Um, shout out to the YouTube moderators. Um, I always love seeing the comments there and their responses. But um, my question is relative to, so we're in baby step two. We have thousand dollars. We're attacking our credit card debt. Um, we have about $42,000 of total debt, including student loans, credit cards, and a Jeep that you're probably going to tell me to sell. Um, but the where I'm kind of confused about stork mode. Um, we already, we still have pretty much everything from our first child. Um, my wife plans on taking three to six months off, um, to be home with both of our kids. She's a nurse. Um, I work in the automotive industry and I guess my question is when should I pause attacking our debt like crazy and start saving up for the uncertainty of having a child? No. Right now. Yeah, push pause on the whole total money makeover thing and pile up cash. So here's the thing. How much cash can you pile up in nine months? Um, if we stop paying off debt, probably twelve to 14000 Okay. So 15000 bucks is in the account because you are going to stop paying off debt if you follow what we tell you to do. Um, and baby comes healthy, no problem. Insurance covers what it's supposed to cover. Mama's healthy, no problem. They come home from the hospital. Three days later, you clean out that account and pay it down on the debt. The amount that you lost by doing that is really close to zero. You lost no traction. You will be in exactly the same place 10 months from now if you pay down on the debt by 15000 or if you put 15000 in the account and then pay down on the debt. Mm -hmm. There's really, I mean, the only difference would be a little bit of interest on the debt that you'd pay during that nine months, but it's, it's, ne it's negligible. It's, le it's less than 40 or 50 bucks. Okay. So we're not really playing. And, and what that 15,000 gives you is peace of mind. What it gives her is peace of mind because, uh, you know, what we want to concentrate on is the beauty and the elegance of the birth and another child coming, not be distracted by any money crap. Mm -hmm. Like if there's a little hiccup of some kind, you know, think about it. You got the money. Yeah, Chris, how much do you guys make a year? Um, total this year, we're on track to be right under 100. Okay, um, and how much was the Jeep when you were like, oh, the Jeep, you're going to tell me to sell it, but how much is that? Um, it's worth about 20. The remaining loan balance on it is 11. Yeah. No, okay. that's, that's not necessarily selling it. If you're making 100, that's No, not yeah, bad. you're fine. Well, I was going to say, if there was like one big move you wanted to do, if it was at a point where that car payment was so exhausting and you could sell it and make some money on it, right, or something like that, if there was a situation mm -hmm. there, I it's would so, be okay if you did that. But just in general, just pausing and having cash in the bank during this is, yeah. Let, let me fast forward 10, 10 months, okay? You, you save 15000 baby's home, you pay off 15000 in debt. What's going to keep you on track this time? Um, my wife and I are really looking further than six months in the future. Um, we're buying, we've been living in a inherited home that we're actually starting to look towards purchasing from her parents. And looking at that has made us take a much longer perspective on everything. What do you do in the automotive industry? Um, I work as a program manager. I connect suppliers with warehouses across the country to help them get their parts into parts stores and onto your car. Okay. All right. Are you 25? I'm 29. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Because now's the time, dude. You don't get you mm -hmm. don't get to restart this crap six times and go win. You you need to mm -hmm. you need to play through this time. Yeah. For the sake of this kid. And hold on the line, Chris. Austin will pick up and I'll give you my new kids book. I'm glad for where I am and I'm glad for what I have. I'll give you both for, for the little ones. We're so gonna give you a financial piece university too. Why don't you go through that? I want you to I want you to play through this time. I want you to finish. Finish well, my man. Finish well.
Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. Victoria is with us in Springfield. Hey, Victoria, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, I was calling because I'm curious to find out how I can get my name off of my parents' debt. How did your name get on your parents' debt? So apparently when we were younger, um, they put my and my brother's names on their credit cards to build credit, which at the time may have been a good idea. However, they No, it wasn't. It was called identity theft. Yeah, they've been overspending a lot, and that's reflecting on my credit score. And then it was about two years ago, we, um, we've been timeshare owners for a very long time, and about two years ago, they added my brother and I as owners. But we have no idea in terms of like what to do with this timeshare and it's kind of becoming a big financial headache for the family. And so I kind of want out because to me, it's not worth all the arguments and the financial stress that it's causing. Yeah, this is a, it's something that we're seeing more and more our parents. So just as, as a warning for parents out there that this is a trend that is going on, that people are doing this, they're putting their kids on their debt or on their credit card specifically thinking, oh, yeah, we're going to build up their credit. And then this is what ends up happening, Victoria, is that you get the the brunt end of it. So at that end, I'm like, uh, have you talked to them about them taking your name off of the credit card well, specifically? The timeshare will be more complicated. Yeah, so I've, we've brought it up to them because now it's to the point where, like, my brother and sister-in-law can't buy another house because their debt to income ratio is affected by their credit card debt, like my parents' credit card debt. So it's kind of been a family discussion. And so my parents moved their credit or the debt that they had on one credit card to another credit card that has a 0% interest and does not have our names on it. But I'm And then they curious. need to close that other account. Exactly. And that gets your names but off of it. I think they still owe a little bit more on that. Cause you pay it off and close I'm, the account. That gets your name off of it. Yeah. They're you're, you're, you guys are off. like being Midwestern sweet people. Hillbillies would have already like punched somebody. <laughs> this is this well, is just true. not okay. You should be angry. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's caused a lot of like family fights. And yeah. I'm you know, just, just because we're, I'm new to the Ramsey method. It's not the I Ramsey method. It's called illegal. Well, it's criminal right, fraud. But, okay? I mean, it's... Agreed. you When you add somebody else's name to a legal document without having a power of attorney to do so, that's called criminal fraud. I mean, it's, it's illegal. You, it's like serious. You don't just... God, man... But people are doing, I mean, they're, they're do- I know people are doing it, yeah, but, it's but it's illegal not, as heck, man. Well, when you put their name as a minor specifically it's on it. It's illegal. Well, they're not taking it and opening it solely in their name. 
But the point is, is that it's affect it's it's affecting Victoria, obviously, it's and all of it. Straight so, up stupid. So I mean, yeah. So Victoria, I mean that that's that's the answer is for them to I, I, pay I, it off, close the accounts. But then when you get into and the- then you know call and yell at the timeshare company and go, I did not give you permission to put. No one has permission to put my name on there. And if you don't take my name off of there in like thirty six seconds, my attorney is going to punch your lights out. I mean, you yeah, need to get up in some people's grill. Yeah, because I I want my name off of it. Just you, because- listen, let me tell you, a timeshare is a is legalized fraud. It's a horrible product. And so your parents are such wonderful people that they signed their kids up for two of the worst financial products on the planet, timeshares and credit cards. God, what kind of parents are well, these? she can't control the parents. I Why know. are you yelling at her? I'm not yelling Help at her. her. I'm just saying this, these guys, man. So if I'm you, I'm going for the juggler on this. I mean, you need to get the timeshare people on the line and ring them out. You do not have my signature. I am not responsible. And if you don't take my name off of this... I'm going to own your little Cause, company. Because that, that's, that's true, Victoria, right? You didn't sign your name in You're it. not liable. It's well, identity theft. I'm double checking that she that didn't, hurt. that they weren't at Christmas and the parents were like, here, sign this. And she forgot about it or realized it. I was just double checking. You didn't no, sign anything, no. right, Victoria? No, the credit cards they put me on, the timeshare, I did sign two years okay, ago that's, because oh, we God. had no knowledge. Of there we go. So okay. No, nope. it's okay. To figure out how yeah. to get my name out of it. Okay. Exactly. So help her. How do you... How does she get her? How does she get out of it? I have no idea. I mean, you signed up for a timeshare. How do you get out of a timeshare? You can't. You're stuck in a thicket of briars. Um, I mean, if the family can talk the timeshare company into retitling this, I'll be shocked. But oh god. Uh, I mean, how do you? Get, if you call me up, just say I just bought a timeshare. I would go. Well, that was really a ridiculously dumb activity. So, uh, which is you know, and, and now how do I get out of it? You, they're almost impossible to get out of. They're just horrible. It's a it's a grotesque industry. Yeah. And they they feed on the weak. And um, uh, um, I I honestly don't know how to tell you other than hire an attorney. And uh, start talking to them about how you're going to sue them if they don't let you take you off of it. And some of these attorneys go after timeshare companies and do a good job with them. Um, but uh, if, the, if the pair, if if everyone came in, because she said her brother or sister was in on it too. So if it was her and the sibling and the parents, if they all got an attorney together to try to get out, is that a better way? Or getting out a fourth would be more difficult. Do you know what I mean? Like if there could be an agreement that. They all get out. Yeah, l- is let's, that an pre- let's pretend way? you could get this set particular set of parents to do anything. Um, let's pretend you could do that, okay? And they actually did start the legal process yeah. together. I can't depend on them to finish it because they're the things they're willing to do to their own children is baffles the mind. Okay, but so, the I mean, author- really, I, I, it does. I so, hear I, you, but the authorized user on credit cards is a legal thing, and people are doing that it today. It is not a legal yes, thing. Yes, it is. Authorized users. I... A- authorized user is not liable for the debt. They didn't sign up authorized user. They were yeah, but owners they're getting of the, the credit. account. It, wouldn't, it shouldn't be showing up on their credit bureau if they're just an authorized user. It's yep. not supposed to. You could clear. That's a different issue. You could clear that off because an authorized user is not an owner of the account. They're not liable legally. Yes, but they do get the perks of the credit they're of the account. They're not supposed to. They're not supposed to. But they are. Because they're not an owner of the account. They're not financially responsible for the account. And so, yeah, this is what different. this is where stupid parents are doing to their kids. They're just ridiculous. And if you're doing this to your kids, you're stupid. You should stop it. Don't mess up your kid's life. This poor lady right here is dealing yes. with people like you if you're doing this to your kid. So, gosh, I'm so sorry, honey. Uh, I don't have an answer for you. Get the credit cards closed completely down We'll get that'll get rid of it either way. Um, and, and then you've got a fight on your hands with the idiot timeshare industry. It is the most grotesque, fraud filled, horrible industry on the planet. They're just awful. It's just it's the worst. And I've dealt with them for 20 years trying to get people out. We had a company that did it for a while, and the company went sideways and so screwed up. If you had to, Dave, George and I played this game on Happy Hour. Would you rather have a timeshare or a leased car? <laughs> I, don't have to enter, I don't have to enter the land of stupid and pick one option. <laughs> No. Okay, I just I'm going to turn around and leave the land of stupid. I'm not going to pick one of the options. So uh, just, I, why would I do that? <laughs> I so know, it's just a fun game. It's not a fun game. Just to lighten the mood. 
No, it's not. There's nothing light about it. It just aggravates me. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, so gosh, Victoria, I'm sorry. I'm just angry for you. This just pisses me off that your mom and dad would treat their own children this way. It's affecting your brother and sister-in-law's ability to buy a home. Mm -hmm. This is awful. It's just awful. And, and you know, the, the fact that your family's so freaking dysfunctional that your Christmas present is the opportunity to sign, to co-sign no, on that a was timeshare. True. I was using that as an example. Well, just when you come by Christmas, sign up. You know, you know, it's just like. Well, I don't know if that was what happened. I, I know, was just I know, but I'm just, it's what example. happened. It's the way this family works. So uh, I'm so sorry for you. I, I do not know. The only thing I know how to do is go after the timeshare business. The only way they understand, and that's a, a metaphorical two before to the face. Oh, my God. It's the only thing you can do to get their attention. You have to hit them hard. It's the only thing they get. They are a nasty, fraudulent industry. They're horrible. Have I been unclear in America? This is The Ramsey Show. Your home is probably the biggest purchase you'll ever make. And with the real estate market like it is now, you'll need a mortgage company you can trust. That's Churchill Mortgage. You guys, buying a home is not a button push. It's a process. It takes building a relationship with an expert who will dig into the details and give you peace of mind without busting your budget. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country. And they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Go to churchillmortgage.com to get started. Well, just before showtime, Preston Cannon, our vice president of publishing for Ramsey Press, brought in a brand new copy of Ken's new book, which comes oh, out it's in beautiful. May. Oh, it's Actually the thing, yeah. So uh, find the work you're wired to do. It includes a code in the back. It's got this little tear-off thing. And when you tear it off, it's going to open up, and you'll see the code to enter for the Get Clear career assessment. We've sold almost 100,000 of those assessments to you folks. They're very good. It's one of the best digital products we've ever developed at Ramsey to help you figure out what you're good at, where you ought to go with your career, direction to take you towards your talents, your passions, all of that. It's incredible. So the, an assessment code is included with the new book because the new book is there to describe to you the results of the assessment and what to do with it. And um, so that's what this does. So if you have never taken the assessment, you can get the book. It comes with an ebook with an assessment, a audio book with an assessment code, and the hardback book. So you get three of the assessments to give to friends and relatives or whatever, and the books to help so you good. tell how to do it. And it comes out in it's on pre sale right now. You can get it, but we'll we'll actually ship them in early May. Yeah, we've had I've had friends, we've had family take oh, man, that assessment. So it really is. It's really really well done. It, it's huge. It's fabulous. Zach is with us in Dallas. Hey Zach, how are you? Doing well. How about yourself? Better than I deserve. How can I help? So I'm getting married this December. Uh, my fiance currently has a 2006 Mustang that's starting to fall apart. I would like to get her a new vehicle after we're married, or we would like to get a new vehicle after we're married. Not as a wedding present, just as getting her something better that's more reliable. Uh, I currently make about $110,000 a year. I'm debt-free. I own a house my parents uh, gifted me. What is an acceptable budget to get her a vehicle? And one reason I'm asking is uh, her family is very judgmental and causes problems whenever she gets new things or nice things. So I'm trying to find a budget mm. that won't get too much flack from them, but also gets her in a nice, reliable vehicle. Well, I would be looking at the latter, Zach. I think that um, first part of worrying about what they think, that's going to that's gonna be a long exhausting life that you're going to live if that's a filter that you use. And so I think it's a good practice for this to be the first purchase that you guys make solely 
as a couple based on your numbers, which you guys want, and regardless of of the judgment that probably will be coming because how you guys are set up already with a paid for house, you have no debt, you make great money. You guys will probably be purchasing some things in the near far future that they will be judging probably a lot throughout your marriage. So I think it's a good practice to say, here's our first, you know, the first purchase we're going to make as our own family unit. And it's going to be a stretch for you guys emotionally, but I would do that. And then looking at the numbers, uh, do you, do you have any money saved? About 125000 in the bank. You're oh, a stud. Good for you. How old are you? 21. You're killing You're 21. It, man. <laughs> you are so killing it. I'm so proud of Great you. Great job, Zach. Man, she got a catch. Uh, you're, you're something else. I'm six classes away from graduating with a degree. I have no college debt, and I work about 70 hours a week right now. What are you? What's your degree in? Uh, business management. <laughs> you're going to be a multimillionaire. You're amazing. So nice. Good for you. Good for you. So... The, the rule of thumb on cars is they go down in value. You know that. Yes. A guy like you knows that already. I don't, that's not something I have to teach you. So yeah. we tell folks, don't your, buy your things with your, motors and wheels, boats, sea dews, snowmobiles, and tractors. Don't buy things with motors and wheels that all add up. When you add up all your stuff with motors and wheels to more than half your annual income, because it all goes down in value. And so in your case, you make a hundred grand, you're talking about spending 20 grand on her and you're well in range, right? Yes. Yeah. It's no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. She, she doesn't need a $70,000 car. Doesn't fit your budget. Yeah. Okay. No, we were looking at a, a new Honda CRV, which runs about 38 to 40. Okay. I would not do a new one unless you've okay. got a million dollar net worth and you don't. No. So I, I would hold back on that. But maximum, when you're done, your car plus her car does not need to be more than 50% of your take-home pay and pay cash, okay? Okay. So, I mean, 50% of your gross annual. So your gross annual together is going to be what? Uh, she's currently a full-time student, so I just... What's, your, what's her degree in? Uh, it's in archaeology. When she graduates? She really wants to... 2025. Okay. So at the time you're doing this, it's going to be your income, and you make what? 70. 110. 110. I'm sorry. Okay. So 55 total. What's your car worth? Uh, my truck is worth about 50,000. Okay. Uh, well, you're, you're way over. Okay. So, okay. Uh, I, you know, 15, 20 grand for her max. And then don't do this again. It's the only dumb thing you've done in the whole story. You told me you really have got your act together, except that truck. Was it paid for? Yes, you pay cash for the truck. I did. It was, uh, I, the yeah. job I got, I needed to have a 21 to you, you did not need a $50,000 $50, truck. I don't care what job you No, got. it's my biggest regret so yeah, far. It's, it's your biggest mistake so far. Yeah. Everything else in your story is fabulous. So you, you've been really smart. But you got too, you're going to have too much tied up in cars and don't do it again. But you're 21. you got the rest of your life to do smart. So you're fine. Everything's okay. You're great. You're great. Now, when you buy her a twenty-five or a $20,000 car or something like that, which is about what this a used CRV, in other words, um, to put her in something nicer, back to the other part of the question. Um, Rachel's right. Trying to please judgmental people uh, that you love and you actually care about their judgment is exhausting. And so I, I, you're a really nice young man, and I want to teach you to continue to be nice to them. Uh, on the outside, but in the inside, when they start talking like that, I just want you to say, Nunya. So they, Nunya they business. don't like me already. I, I don't care. I'm frustrated they deal with her. Yeah, that's fine. They, they Nunya. She flight. needs to learn to hear in her head when they start something, just go Nunya. Because let me tell you okay. how many times one of my grown kids called and asked me if they should buy a car. Zero. Or asked me when they should have a baby zero which is appropriate by the way they don't need my permission they're what's known as grown okay and i do they you know rachel drives one of those rolling batteries i mean i don't <laughs> why would why would why would i condone that i wouldn't condone that tesla stuff God. it's not like a real car so um why, and they catch fire i'll what, beat you i'll beat you on the interstate you will you, for sure. you, you beat me in the parking lot too i've seen you but the uh, uh but the uh i'm kidding around but you know we so we could just have fun with it and that's the extent of my judgment yeah but her. there's a relationship fact i mean they're fractured already before they even enter the marriage yeah. zach what's i'm just curious i mean she's still in school 
and I had a semester left of college when I got married in December. So there's no judgment on my end. I'm just curious. What's what's causing kind of like a level of urgency to get married now? If she has a full year left, you're still in school and the parent, it's not great with the family. Like what's the, is it just you guys love each other and this is it? Um, for the most part, yes. Uh, that's That's really all there is to it is that we've dated for two years. We're ready to get married, ready to move in and um, see less of a reason to wait than we do to go ahead and get married. Gotcha. Okay. I was just that's curious. Right. Uh, that, we want to live together and start, start our lives and we want to do it the right way. And so yeah. good for marriage you. was the next step. Good for that's you. Great. Well, what's going to happen is, is you're just going to go pick up Henry Cloud's book, Boundaries, mm-hmm. because that's what I'm t- saying is just, you got to have boundaries. Just say, you smile at them and go, yeah, okay. Um, but you, if you filter your decisions through what they think, Rachel's exactly right. It's going to be exhausting because you cannot anticipate what crazy is going to do. That's why it's known as crazy. So, and you you'll just, never make them happen. I mean, no, you could buy not, a five thousand dollars. It doesn't car matter what you do. You know, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's not way. because. And the point is, you know, you reach a point that you're not doing anything for them. And that point is the day you say I do, which is the which you're in the hardest season, though. I mean, from an age wise young, you know, the the amount of time from a parent's handoff to the real world. I mean, the older you get and the more life experiences and more decisions you make, the easier it is. This is the hardest. This will be those hard that the hardest season uh, to feel that and actually yeah. walk through those motions. And so you guys together, it's like you just lock arms and just say, and even have like a funny code. If you guys go to Christmas and they make a comment, just like have a thing with each other of like, I'm just going to like scratch my ear and be like, I'm dying inside, but, but just me and you know, right? Like you got to like, just, you got to have fun with it and lean on each other. But congratulations, Zach. We're excited for you guys. Now I'm looking for funny codes. <laughs> This is The Ramsey Show. of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, number one best-selling author, host of the Rachel Cruz Show, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour, both Ramsey Network hits, and my daughter, Ramsey Personalities, my co-host today. Open phones at 888 825 Five two two five. Rachel, this is right up your alley. Let's jump in and do the uh, question of the day. It's Financial Literacy Month, and one of the ways we're celebrating is taking questions from students at high schools that are teaching our high school curriculum, Foundations in Personal Finance. Um, and by the way, Texas and South Carolina have just mandated, they're the latest two states, to mandate that personal finance be taught as a graduation requirement in their high schools salute to you two states well done there's a time that the legislature in your state did good work and uh, of course we're one of the options that the the, uh, are adopted by your state uh uh uh, board of education whatever it is and have adopted us in both cases uh which means we're one of the options the schools are selecting from and we're honored that a whole bunch of schools in both of those states are now going to add this so today's question comes from a student at bb high school yes and it says if you are a natural spender how do you learn to save when your tendency is to spend? Oh, that's what you said. It's my kind of question. But it's you and me both. We're both just, natural spenders. Just on the break, too. I was like, just buy the thing. Dad, we we're talking about something. Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think for me, I had to, I, I, I realized two things pretty quickly. Number one, I realized if I didn't save at all, then the amount of stress, the future Rachel of what she would want to do, like all of that is gone, right? There's 
there is something there to say, I'm going to plan for the future. And that's motivating to me. So that kind of helped get this rhythm um, for me to be able to say, okay, the savings is there. And, and there is to a point it's a spender. And again, I think savers have their negatives. We can talk about that. But the, the spender negative at times is we can get in a rhythm of like, oh, if I just, that thing is exciting to buy and I get some excitement from it. And then that excitement fades and it may fade an hour after you buy the thing. It may fade a week after you buy the thing, but eventually that excitement fades. And if you depend on your happiness or your joy in life to be on that type of excitement, you're going to be a rat in a wheel for the rest of your life. And it becomes a contentment issue at that point, not just a money, dollars and cents issue. And so that part's very important. And that's a hard one. I mean, the contentment idea is really difficult. I think as spenders can kind of be that rat in a wheel at times and just get, get, get. And so understanding where your joy, your happiness, your identity even comes from. And, and one question I even ask myself, Dave, when I buy stuff for me, is I filter through the question, if nobody sees this purchase, do I still want it? Like, is there any motivator for what, whether it's a compliment or what someone's going to think about me? Like, is that any if level of motivation? you never posted online that you had bought this. Yeah, or you went on that vacation if nobody knew. The like, whatever it is. falls in the woods and no one is there. Yeah. <laughs> it's the spender still spending. Yeah. yeah so it's just uh, making sure the motives, that's you know, good. Are, are healthy. It's really good. That is healthy. Because that's tr- trying to get affirmation from others based on the label mm-hmm. is a real problem for spenders. Yep. Um, so spending a, as a reformed spender myself, um, a, a matured spender, I still spend, uh, it's still my natural bent, but, um, I'm also a math nerd. So I came up with two things that caused me to do it in my case. Um, one is I knew if I saved more, I could spend more because <laughs> I would have more. And so the quality of car I drive today far exceeds the quality of car when I didn't save <laughs> back in the day. And I was a broke person. So, uh, yeah, it, you, you get you get a better life, mm-hmm. you know, and a, mm-hmm. a better spender life. And the second thing is not always true, but in the 30 something years I've been doing this more often than not. It's a generality, but more often than not, spenders are also generous people. They like to give. And you can't give if you're broke. And if you give a $1,000 car or a $2,000 car to a single mom and it changes her life, what if you did 10 of them? And you change 10 of them's life for 20000 instead of 2000 And you can't do that if you're broke. And so the way you get that 20000 to give is to save it. And so the, the enjoyment yeah. of money is what a spender likes. Mm-hmm. And the enjoyment of giving, the enjoyment of the generosity, but also the enjoyment of consumption, too. And so uh, both of those are, are what drive um, me in the situation. But I think your answer was probably better. Oh, overall. thanks. It I'll really take was. It. I mean, you know, it's because, it you know, it, 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 the problem with spenders is, is that we're worshiping at the idol of stuff if we're not careful yes and if you bow down to that idol you will find it's a false idol it does not deliver yep it does not deliver satisfaction and to swing on the other end of the spectrum because i talk about this in my book know yourself know your money that that's the that's the downside of the spender and that's real very very real but there is a downside of a saver where you become so control freaked tight-fisted hoarding mentality that there's almost this level of of stress because you just have the money. I mean, like, like you almost can't find the peace either, right? right. Because you're holding on so There's tight. not a big enough savings to get peace yes. for a saver. So it's kind of on that other end, too. So you savers, have, we're not left, leaving you off the hook. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's uh, – it, and Larry Burkett used to say it well. He said there's a difference – the only difference between saving and hoarding is not the amount. The only difference is saving and hoarding is the intent. mm you know, why are you doing this? Yeah. What's it yeah. for? Because hoarders are, I might need that someday. Savers are, I might need that someday. You know, and it, it's this idea that you're going to get from something money can't give you. Yes, yes. Which is contentment, is peace. There's not enough money to, you can't have a big enough pile of money to uh, for it to serve you. You have to, I mean, for you to serve it, you have to, it has to serve you. Yeah. And so if you're trying to get from stuff, spenders, joy and contentment it's going to come up short you eat enough lobster it tastes like soap and i like lobster but uh if you if you do enough if you eat enough fine dining it's no longer fine 
Um, and, and so, you know, it doesn't matter. And, and as soon as you get a really expensive car, you, you, you know, you, you, you get a real problem with where to park it because some body will bounce a door off of it like it's a basketball and then go oh did i do that yes you just did yeah that, and then you know. your whole enjoyment's wrapped up in like oh my gosh this thing like I, yeah I'm and now i'm worshiping this thing and ready yeah. to kill this person oh my God. you know and it's just like Arr! you know but yeah but i mean that's all that is that's the thing you can't you can't it, you, you just live in this world where this stuff you're asking stuff or a pile of money depending on whether you're a saver or a spender to do something for you it can't do that's right that was your point it yeah. was a better point than mine no it's good it's true it's, it's all point. true it's a good point and uh god is not fond of idol worship it comes up early and often in scripture <laughs> and that's what this comes down to is where are you trying to get joy from mm-hmm. yeah and and so if you uh i like our friend the minimalist title it's uh, use stuff not people Yes. You know, it's that's good. a good thing. And don't let stuff use you. That's the deal. And when you got a $1,200 car payment, you're being used. Hello. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, it's Rachel Cruz here to tell you about a faith-based alternative to health insurance that can make healthcare more affordable, Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM allows members to share each other's healthcare costs and it's as easy as one, two, three. Step one, choose the healthcare provider you want. Step two, submit your eligible bills. And step three, get reimbursed. CHM members take care of your eligible medical bills. With no networks and the freedom to choose your healthcare provider, CHM is the best option for Christians who want to take care of their families and help other believers. Find out more at chministries.org slash budget. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. Hey, we are really excited about this upcoming Total Money Makeover event weekend here on the Ramsey campus. Uh, Rachel and I and George Campbell and Jade and Dr. John Deloney and Ken Coleman, we're going to be doing a weekend-long event, the Total Money Makeover Weekend. We want you to join us. We're going to help you get real healthy money habits that will really change your relationship with money for good. We're covering all the things you want to know, how to get out of debt, how to create a budget with every dollar, how to communicate with your spouse about finances, how to ease anxiety around money, how to invest and build the retirement of your dreams, how to increase your income so that you can do all of these things. What is the key things that when woven together give you a very high probability of not only getting a handle on this money stuff, but becoming wealthy? We're going to take you all the way through it. This weekend long event is the ultimate motivator to get you fired up and excited to live the life you've always wanted. Uh, We're going to be doing a live taping of the hit podcast, Smart Money Happy Hour with Rachel and George. We're going to have lots of Q&As throughout the weekend and all the personalities, me, Rachel, Dr. Deloney, George Campbell, Jade Washaw, Ken Coleman. Don't wait to get your tickets. This thing is not sold out yet, and you can still get them. We would love to have you. Uh, get them at RamseySolutions.com slash events. We'll start on Friday evening and go through Saturday evening. And uh, if you get a little bit here a little bit early, you can watch the show. This show happen on the glass from 1 to 4 Central Time. Um, and that's free for anybody, but you can certainly make that a part of your plan to do the whole thing. Later on, I'll be speaking on Friday night. They'll be doing the uh, Smart Money Happy Hour on Friday night, Mm -hmm. and then all day we're going to... If you bring a reluctant spouse, they won't be reluctant anymore when you leave. If you bring a friend that thinks you're crazy for doing this stuff, they will be just as crazy as you when they leave. We're going to teach you how to do this stuff, and man, when you get in that kind of an all-immersive setting, you can't come away... It's like taking a cram course on all the stuff you should have known about money. It's going to be so fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. These events are, they are, 
they're really fun. I mean, it's it's being in a room with it. There's energy. There's people. There's learning. There's me. You know, we bring hopefully lots of laughter and storytelling, and it's relaxed and it's fun. I mean, just come hang out with us. It's gonna be it's gonna be a really great event. It's life changing. Yeah, RamseySolutions.com/events to get your tickets. We'll be doing this, of course, May. Uh, what is it? What's the dates on this thing? Huh. Uh, May 10th through 11th. 10th and 11th. Okay, mm-hmm. that's it. I should have been on here, I guess. Okay, cool. All right, uh, let's go to Kenneth in Rochester. Hey, Kenneth, welcome to the Ramsey Show. What's up? Hi, Ramsey. How are you guys doing today? Better than we deserve. What's up? Uh, so I'm a relatively new listener, um, but I've been watching your videos for the past couple of weeks now at work, and I keep hearing you like take miniature like jabs at SoFi. And so as somebody who uses SoFi, I was wondering if there is a reason you don't like the app and if you would uh, recommend an alternative. Well, SoFi is a bank. Yeah, I know. You know that, right? Uh, sorry, not app, bank. Okay, they're, they're a bank uh, and they sell sorry, debt. They, they sell debt. Okay. That's what they do. They're, 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 everything in the app is designed amongst all this cheesy acting like they care about you bull crap but they don't care about you they're trying to sell you debt they're basically you know uh bank of america in a in a millennial clothing that's all they are i mean they're, they're a bank they sell credit card debt they sell student loan debt they sell mortgage debt they sell home equity loan debt it's where they make all their money they're a bank they sell debt you know that right yeah i I was just wondering if uh, there was something more to it because, like, from what I've listened to in your videos, it seems like basically every bank does that. So I was wondering if there was a reason why you usually call out SoFi specifically. I I call out Bank of America, Fifth Third Bank, and Chase yeah. pretty regularly too, right? Because they're large yeah, so mega I- banks that don't have a soul and don't care a dad blame thing about their customer. They're there to milk you. That's their whole job. The only difference in SoFi and those other guys is those other guys just tell you, we're here to screw you. And SoFi puts it all in all this little sweet millennial nurturing clothing, and it's just a bunch of crap. It's so hypocritical. It's unbelievable. And they have a but great arena. They, 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 and they have an arena. The SoFi. Yeah, that, or that's stadium. What, the stadium. I always make fun of that. I just go, SoFi, stadium. right? That's when you hear me picking on them, right? But, but I mean, it, it's, it's, dude, just the, dude, it's just the big They are not your friend. So if there was an alternative, Kenneth, it is more... Or the credit union, your local bank, a state, you know, wide bank, a regional bank. Yeah, exactly. Going more localized with your banking is is a better and, way. Because you're actually yes, going to talk to people. They sell too, but they have most of the local community banks and credit unions have a, at least a bit of, if not a really good soul. And they actually will treat you like a human being in the process. If you have to go and sit down with but somebody. These guys, get, you know, they, they serve the stockholder. These mega banks, they got one thing. They need one thing from you, your money. That's it. That's all they want. And, and so, um, and it's just, it is kind of, you know, when you watch their ads, it's just like, oh, come on, really? I mean, but I guess people believe it. Well, you they're know, good. I, I mean, they, I mean, their, their, mar- are, their yeah. marketing is yeah, pretty it makes fantastic. Yeah, it makes you sound like that they actually care. You know, <laughs> it's a hoot. Um, but they don't. I mean, I promise you, I'm not mad at them. I mean, just they just is who they is. They're just another mega bank. That's all they are. They're out of San Francisco, which is where Bank of America was born. And the Visa card, which was when it was born, was called the um, Bank America card, was the birth of Visa. That's the DNA of Visa. It comes out of that same place. It's the same problem. So, yeah, no, it's not. It's not. I don't, but I, I don't hate SoFi more than Bank of America. Our whole thing here, Kenneth, is we want what's good for you. We want somebody, to, you know, and so when somebody is, you know, not taking care of the consumer, then there, there's a good chance, like timeshare people or something, that I'm going to say something yeah, negative about. For sure. Well, and and I think there's a point there to just to realize and be on guard, Kenneth, of, of how great we mentioned, like their marketing is, like their commercials and stuff. You're like, oh my gosh, and if they're that good on that side, they're going to be that much better on all their online products. You're going to be in it, and you may not even realize, oh my gosh, I'm getting, you know, this here, this here, this here, and they're. And the ultimate, yeah, product is debt because they're making interest on you. I mean, all of it. It's how most banks are making all their money. And so they're just really good at it. So yeah, like they spend be, million, be aware. billions and lot, billions of yes. dollars trying to get yes. your money. Yep. It's their thing, man. I mean, and so 
and, and Wells Fargo. I mean, that's the other one we can drop in there. The level of fraud that company's gone through is unbelievable. So, I mean, but it's, you know, what you're looking for is uh, a bank that their whole existence is not built on trying to milk you like yesterday's cow. I mean, that's really what you've got to get your head around. And uh, so, I, yeah, I do business with a bank or two or three, but none of, but, but, um, you know, well, and, I think and, having- and none of them loan me money because I don't borrow money, you know, so it's not an option. But, the, the you know, just be careful when you're playing with snakes because they bite. That's the whole point. Yeah. And I think, too, a question we're getting a lot is whether, yeah, where to where to hold my, my checking, right? And we yeah. talked about the way. But then a lot of questions about high-yield savings account. That's like one of the biggest right now because the interest rates are so great. So even online banks are another great option. Yeah, for I'm, fine. Like I'm that. fine with an Ally online bank. But again, watch like that. what you're doing. I mean, yep. like, okay, because are they using the high yield savings account as the loss leader to get you in there so they can milk you with credit cards and home equity loans and are they going to just can completely hammer you over and over and, and over and insane. over yeah. and over again because that is the business that they're in the margins in that stuff is it's incredible yeah it's incredible the amount of money banks make and so um, you just have to watch what's going on with that. And so, yeah, anybody that's going to take advantage, you know, that, that, that's not doing a, a stellar job for the consumer, especially in a financial arena, yeah, I'm going to call them out by name. And I have for 35 years. So I don't know that I'm, but I, I, I don't recall being harder on SoFi than I was those other banks. But other than I sneeze and say SoFi because I think it's funny. But other than that, I don't, you know, it's not... You I know. hear Bank of America more from you than so far. I can't stand them. I know. They're just awful. It's just, why would anybody do business with those people? This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, you know this, but I'll say it anyway. College is freaking expensive, and student loans are out of control. The average private student loan debt in 2023 was $55,000. So if you're in over your head with private student loan debt, don't beat yourself up. Look, we've all made mistakes with money in the past. What matters is doing something about it now. So if you're in distress with private student loans, that's private, not federal student loans, call Y Refi. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. To learn more about this custom refinancing option, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. This is the Ramsey Show, where we prove every day that having common sense is like having a superpower in America today. Thanks for hanging out with us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, best-selling author. My daughter is my co-host today. Oksana is with us over in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Oksana. How are you? Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. It's an honor to speak with you. You too. What's up? Well, so my husband and I, we have made some really dumb choices, and so I just wanted to get some of your wisdom. Um, We bought a house. We moved to Charlotte like two years ago, bought a house that needed a lot of remodel before we could live in here. Mm. And so we didn't calculate what it would take, of course. So we just were not very smart financially. We were not disciplined. And I'm just disgusted from our lack of discipline. So now we're on our every dollar budget and I feel like we're finally getting uh, control over money. So my question would be, 
Would it be wise for us to sell our house in order to get out of debt? Or should we find a way to get rid of our expensive car and work our way out of debt that way? Hmm. Is the house renovation complete? It's livable. We're living in it, but it is not complete. Okay. And so if we don't sell it, you've got this need staring you in the face to continue to fix it up, right? Yes, we're slowly working on it like every weekend because my husband does construction, so it's already his like expertise. Yeah. Okay. Um generally when I find folks in that situation by the time you're a couple of years into it like you all are, you're you're sick of this house. <laughs> I'm sick of our debt because we... No, we that wasn't what I'm talking about. That, that's debt. different. That's different. That's a different subject. You're living in um, sawdust all the time and drywall dust. Yes, that is true. Yes, this is our third house yeah. with renovations. It's yeah. never finished. Yeah, and you, you, it's a perpetual state of construction. Yes. And most people, some people are okay with that, but I, it's not unusual for me to talk to someone that's sick of living in those conditions. Mm-hmm. With no hope of it ending anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Is, is that true of you, or is that not true of you? It's okay. It's it's okay if you're different and you just love it. It's okay. No, I don't love it, but I do see a light at the end of this tunnel. Finally, um, where? So I'm How okay far out? To this house, um, probably by the end of summer, we should be done. Oh, okay. That's not bad. That's a reasonable So light. I do see a light, but I have been very sick and tired of living in a construction home like forever. So, yeah. so, so, that, so just, just well, reg- regardless of the other part of the discussion, you guys need to write that down and he needs to hear you because he do- he's not sick of living in construction. He does it every day. Mm-hmm. It doesn't bother him because guys will live under a bridge. I mean, we're not, I mean, we, we'll live anywhere. But ladies somehow need a little different set situation, and that's reasonable to me. But I, you know, so because I can live in a construction situation, but um, but I, but not with my wife. <laughs> so because she guys threshold is gross. Because she's through a not going to live there. College home and walk through a girl's college home, and there's your answer. There's your answer. Guys that's are it. disgusting. So, yeah. So yeah. All of that to say, going forward, don't do this again. Not because of the debt, but because it's not how you want to live. You've done it enough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that that's just a, some advice. Okay. Now, how much debt do you have? We have one hundred and thirty-seven thousand. And how much of that is the expensive car? Yeah, it's uh, sixty-eight thousand. And that's his truck. No, it's our everyday driving car. What is it? <laughs> It's a Toyota 4Runner. Oh, okay. It's your car. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. And what's he drive? Oh, I'm sorry. I said 68. It's actually 59. Um, the 68 is credit card. He drives um, just a van, a work van. Okay. And the 68 was from the, the, the renovation, right? Yeah, renovation and random stuff like going out to eat. Okay. All right. And you stopped all that. All right. So what's your household income? Yes. Well, it dropped a lot since moving here because we had to start back up from scratch. And last year we made forty-seven thousand, mm-hmm. but this year I, I'm projecting it's going to get a lot better because just in April we're going to get about ten thousand in just the month. What do you think you're going to make in twenty twenty-four? Ooh, uh, I'm going to guess like seventy or more okay. at least. All right, that that sounds right. That sounds good. Okay, and what do you owe on the house? On the house, we owe four oh five, four hundred and five thousand. What's your okay. what's your um, mortgage payment every month? Our mortgage is two thousand four hundred. How have you been making a mortgage payment, making forty grand? Credit cards. Wait, what was the question? How are you making a two thousand dollar mortgage payment, making forty grand? Honestly, we've been borrowing from people, and yeah. it's. It's been really I don't know if you can afford this house. Year moving here. Yeah. Yeah, you need to be That's making uh, you need to make making a take home pay of $8,000 a month, which is a which is 110,000 a year to afford this house. Really? 
Really? So that without talking about even the debt? Not counting the debt. Yeah. Really? Yeah, your take home pay oh. should your house payment should not be more than a fourth of your take home pay. Otherwise you put yourself oh. in a pinch. And so uh do you see your way to a hundred and ten thousand dollar income from seventy in the following year? What did he what was his high what was his high point before you left the other place? Like one twenty a year. Yeah, okay. All right. So can he can he get there. back there in another year after this year? I'm hoping and it looks like it's going up. It's like going up pretty fast all yeah. of a sudden and he's a very hard worker, so I'm I can see not that. Not questioning happening. his work ethic, yeah. 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 I'm questioning his math mm-hmm. ability. I would okay. s- but I would sell the car. Mm-hmm. I'd sell the car and I'd keep the house. And if your income does not go up to 120 by the end of 25, you need to sell the house. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Because, you know, but we need to get rid of the car now. And, um, okay. and then you start chipping away at the credit card debt as your income comes up, you'll be able to do that. But if you're, if you're living on a $70,000 income, then your, your take home pay is going to be somewhere in the 55 range after taxes. And you know, that, that's 4,500 bucks a month and almost 50% of that's going to a house payment then. And so it's very you work out- upside down. Like on the difference, what do we, how do we pay You're that upside down on the, the house or the car? No, no, no. On the car. Oh, I got changed. Change what could you, uh, what could you sell it for? We can sell it for 55,000. Who said? 50 to 55. Who said? Oh, I just looked on Facebook, like what people are selling it for. Okay. Go to Kelly Blue Book, kbb.com and look at private sale. That is an accurate number. Very little on what Facebook about, is true. What about JD Power? I also got that a would be okay. There from what, did the you look bank. at a private sale on JD Power? Yeah, it was fifty four. Okay, that's what the car's okay. worth. It's worth fifty five. Okay, and you owe yeah. six, and you owe fifty nine. So you got to come up with four grand to sell it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I you can replace know how a car. Work with a bank. Oh, we just find the cash for it and just pay that difference. Yeah, yeah a, che- a cheap cash car, a hoopty. Because you're broke people. Mm-hmm. But you'll probably have to take out a small loan, Oksana, possibly, to make the difference of that four grand and a little bit of money, too, to replace the Buy car. Buy a $5,000 car. Yeah. yeah. You need you know, $10,000 loan instead of a uh, $59,000 loan. So, yeah, that's going to move you in the right direction. But, yeah, you need to get rid of the car. And then you need to say, if we don't get our income up to the 120 mark by the end of, 19, of 2025, or 19, 2025, <laughs> then... Um, you know, then we've got too much house. And Oksana, hold on the line, and Austin and Taylor are going to pick up, and we want to give you guys Financial Peace University and Every Dollar Premium. Or you said you were doing Every Dollar, so if you have that, no worries. But uh, watch Nine Lessons with you and your husband, and you guys get on the same page with this, because that's a really helpful course to get the these basics down, and so you guys can really go full steam ahead. When you have that knowledge and you start working and creating these new habits, it's going to be so helpful for you guys. It really is. I, I see the light of the incentive for you guys. I think you're on the cusp of change. It's right there. You just need that little extra push. So we, we're cheering for you guys, though. Yeah, you are. Right. You're, you're going to make it. You're going to be okay. And if the house is worth a lot more than 400 yeah, you might want to sell it. That'd be cool, too. Statistics show that half of Americans don't have enough life insurance or they don't have any at all. I don't understand this, John. Why don't people want to take care of their family? They think they're going to die or something? Well, I used to be one of those guys. I didn't even think about it. And one of my buddies said, hey, the only reason to not have life insurance is if you hate your wife and kids. And I immediately went and got term life insurance. That's a gut punch. And Oh, you're telling me. And for, for decades, Dave, I've sat across people who've lost a spouse. They've lost somebody important to them. Me and too. They don't know what to do next. Me right? too. I mean, it's you're going to have a crisis here, and, and you know, you got two options while you're sitting and talking to a young widow. She's concerned about how she's going to invest all this money properly and not mess this up, or she's concerned how she's going to eat tomorrow. That's exactly. These are the right. two options. And term, take care of your dadgum family, man. Term life insurance can replace income, pay off debts, cover funeral expenses, so your family can actually 
have the opportunity to just be sad. Yeah. To just miss you. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. It's saying I love you to your family. Term life insurance. Jeff Zander and the team at Zander Insurance makes it easy and affordable. I've used them personally for 25 years. They're the only people I trust. Go to Xander.com or call 800 356 4282. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Aaron is with us in Oklahoma City. Hi, Aaron. How are you? I am very well. Dave, how are you and Miss Rachel doing? Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? Well, uh, I have a question about I have some money uh, sitting in a savings account uh, that I wanted to see your advice. But uh, as I told the screeners, I have a fairly complicated backstory. Um if you want to hear it. <laughs> sure. It would, it would affect okay. the decision, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and so um, I am a three-time cancer survivor, uh, but also a current cancer patient. Um, mm. About two years ago, I was diagnosed with a stage four incurable and um, have been doing really well uh, for two years. But, uh, you know, yeah, when they tell you that, you fear the end is near every day. So, sure. um, my so my history is uh, roughly in uh, let's see, I have a sixteen year old, a fourteen year old, and a nine year old. Mm-hmm. And when my two older ones were very young, four and one, we started to do the Dave Ramsey plan. Sorry, I'm nervous. So my it's voice okay. is shaking. You're fine. Um, You're doing fine. And uh, we had a lot of debt at that time. Um, and, but we paid off all of our credit cards. We paid off my wife's student loans, uh, and a few other little things. Um, and then in 2012 is when I got, uh, well, originally I had cancer in 2000 and yeah, exactly 2000. And then in 2012, uh, had another issue, had to have a surgery and remove part of my kidney and, uh, sort of have to pay some, uh, medical stuff and it kind of derailed um, where we were. Uh, so for the next, I don't know, nine or so years, we lived on a budget. We still were prudent with our money, but we weren't really getting ahead. Um, and then, uh, bought our own pharmacy, uh, bought our own business, uh, had it for 10 years. And in 2022, we sold it and I made a fairly decent amount of money. But then uh, that was in March, and then in the end of June is when I got diagnosed with this stage four terminal cancer. Okay, so um, my question is, from the sale of that um, business, I um, we we put three hundred and twenty or so in savings. Mm-hmm. Had to use about fifty thousand of that for medical expenses and to live. Mm-hmm. Um, and then fairly recently, I have opened five two nines for all three kids, mm-hmm. but I'm only put, I've only put ten in each, so a total mm-hmm. of thirty. So what I'm looking at is two hundred forty thousand mm-hmm. uh, in in cash savings. That I, I my question is, do I? Well, I, I want you to just kind of guide me, but my in my head, the thought process was, uh, do I continue to invest in five two nines? Do I pay down on the house um, in preparation to try to obviously help uh, my wife and kids mm-hmm. if and when I do go? Mm-hmm. Sorry, that's, that's a lot. Okay. And, no, it's fine. What do you What do you owe on your home? About two eighty four. Okay. And what's your household income today since you sold the business? Uh, well, I've since moved on and got a new job. Uh, we. Combined, we make about 150, 155k. Okay, all right. Well, I think the um, together. So, what's your wife make? Uh, she brings home around 800 every month. I mean, she she works part time, takes full time taking care of the kids. Yeah. Okay. All right. And do you have life insurance? Mine, do you mine, have life insurance in addition? 
I do. I have uh, one point, roughly one point three in in term. Okay. All right. So, um, and I have about seventy combined. We have about seventy five k and four hundred one k Roths. Good. So, what I want to do, if I'm in your shoes, is mm-hmm. put together a plan that works if I live through this, and a plan yeah. that works if I don't. Okay. Is that okay? Uh, I, I believe so. Yes. I think that's what you're asking. Because I, I, yeah, yes, because I do believe in miracles, uh, yeah. and so I'm I'm fine uh, with either one, whatever God chooses. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, and so um, before we do that, uh, have you got your will done? In the process. Okay, and your wife's will as well. Okay, in the process. Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. and that doesn't okay. need to drag out. You need to do that now. Okay. It's very important to get that wrapped up because that will um, it, it will change things in the uh, emotional state of both of you to have had that done. It's a weird thing, but um, it, it, it's, uh, it, it gives you a level of peace and get her a level of peace because it's all, all dialed in. That that box is checked. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And it, it's it's also like uh, if you've got your spiritual life arranged, like you know where you're going, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're walking with God, right? Amen. Yes, I am. Okay. All right. So you, that's you know not one less thing to worry about. So you know to <laughs> die to die at this point is gain then. Yes. Th- those of us, uh, those hard, of us that are people that accept that yeah. with nine year old kid. I, 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 you are correct. I, I, I get it. I get it. I, I'm there's the spiritual understanding and the intellectual understanding and the emotional acceptance. I don't know if I could deal with it. I it's I don't I don't want to trade places with you, but I'm just talking through what I would do if I were in your shoes. I'd want to make sure I had these things arranged. That gives me a foundation to arrange the rest of it. Does that make sense? Yes. Because yep. what I, what I found is I, I get um when I'm facing hard stuff, if I if I address each of the buckets in the hard stuff, then I've done all I can do, and then the rest is the ride. And so, um, so the will, your spiritual walk and condition, all of that, and, and then we say, okay, you got one. If you pass away, she's got two hundred fifty thousand in the bank. She's got one point one million in insurance coming, so she's got you know a million three, and she writes a check and pays off the house that day. Sits down with a smart investor pro. Oh, by the way, you could probably go ahead and do that now, and let her and you develop a relationship with this uh, mm-hmm. an investment broker that understands what's going on and okay if if she walks in here with a paid for house and a million dollars we're going to invest that and she can live off the proceeds or live off the income it creates and raise the kids and not have to work because i think she can probably live on 100 grand a year can't she uh yes okay all right so you, you know if you lay that out now that's the if i die scenario the house is paid off we invest in mutual funds with the balance of the insurance money and um and then we know that financially the kids are going to eat and go to college. We're good. I would not yeah. do 529s with this money. Um, okay. And now if you live longer, uh, you're going to need this liquidity to fight this uh, because you're you're probably at a uh, – it sounds like you're in alternative treatment stage. Is that right? No, no, no. I'm actually doing very, very well. I'm – I tell people I'm in really good shape for the shape I'm in. Okay, uh, okay. I, I, I work. I so you're work still doing straight chemo. 40, I'm doing chemo every 21 days. Yeah, okay. Uh, I work All right. uh, 46 hours a week. But uh, if you need, if you, you know, need fifty thousand bucks to fly to X Y Z country to begin a uh, a treatment that is beyond what your normal course of events are here to take uh, another uh, another shot at this whole thing, you've got that money laying there, and I want to keep it laying there for you. Okay. I also want to keep it laying there if you guys decide you want to take, like, a family trip and create a memory. Yeah. That'd be okay, too. Uh, That's a good use of well, this money. Mm-hmm. We, I've, I've already paid for a trip at the end of May. Good for uh, you. For us to go do that. Um, good for so. you. Okay, and okay. I, so I want to give okay. you permission to use some of this money that way, and, and then if 10 years later we're sitting here and that money's gone but you're here, I'm good with that. That's a good investment. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so yeah. kind of sit tight on it, and yeah, let's sit tight on it. But, but sit down and lay out here. your plan. Of you know what I'm doing is, if you're alive, I'm keeping this money liquid, so we can take care of you and create the situation, best situation for the family. If you're gone, we got this money plus the insurance money, pay off the house and invest, and we lay that out and put all those relationships in place to go there. So you've got a, you know, you've got a, a thing laid out, and then if I'm you, that gives me peace because I got a plan. And to, to fight through this, and I think it's helpful to do that. Man, I'm praying for you, Aaron. You're a strong dude. This is The Ramsey Show. of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author and host of the Smart Money Happy Hour with our own George Campbell on the Ramsey Networks, and my daughter is my co-host today. Thanks for joining us, America. The phone number is 888 825 Two two five. Brandon is with us. Brandon is in Evansville, Indiana. Hi, Brandon. How are you? Hi, Dave and Rachel. Thanks for having me. Uh, pleasure to talk to both of you. You too. What's up? Yeah, I've got a question for you. This is a phone call compared to a lot of the ones you get to have. I've been listening to you since uh, about 2007 or so. Wow. Um, I'm debt free except for the house uh, right now. Um, that's all about the change. I've got a significant windfall coming from work. Um, that's life changing essentially. And um, I'm trying to get my ducks in a row. Um, I've met with my financial advisor. I've met with a uh, meeting with a CPA and a state attorney coming up here in the next two weeks. Wow. Um, and so the real question becomes um, the buckets, how they, the percentages, how they change, the give, save, and spend. Um, and really kind of focusing on um, the giving portion on like what percentages do you give for that? Um, and how do you make it put boundaries on that? So you don't find, you know, I, I don't think I have anybody like that that would do it, but just, you know, you don't know who's going to come out of the woodwork. Um, if you start giving money away, um, and I just want to be able to help out people. And then on top of that, on the back end of it, just some of the other fun stuff we get to do with it as well. Yeah. How much money are you getting, Brendan? Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the seven figure range over a million bucks. Yeah. Wow. Good for you. I'm so proud for you. That's great. Way yeah. to go, man. You killed it. How old are you? Uh, about 40. Way to go. Good for you. Man, you're killing it. It's awesome. Yeah. How much is left on the house, Brandon? Uh, about 100000 Oh, okay. my gosh. Okay. So most of this is, is all for you guys. So it then. really does fall in the three buckets then. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and really just kind of, I, I don't know what percentages to put any everything in. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you know, obviously give 10% is kind of an easy one, but then, um, you know, if I want to go either above that or just help others, uh, yeah. in my family, well, I'm like, what, I'm, are, are you attending a local church? Yes. Okay. Okay. So evangelical Christians teach and believe, and I'm one of them that we give a tie the 10th of our income to our local church. Okay. And so I start with that on mine. So when I get a check, like you're talking about, uh, 50% is gone because 40% is going to stinking taxes and 10% is going to tithe. So then Correct. the give, save, spend buckets are with the other 50%. Okay. Okay. So let's just say you got a million dollars as an example. Okay. And, um, you know, and we're not talking about paying off the house because you're getting more than a million dollars. So we'll just use a million dollars net. So you're going to pay 400,000 in taxes on it. And, you know, because you have to pay your fair share, you communist. And so, you know, you know how that is, right? A bunch of crap. And so, um, you know, like, like, it's, like it's somebody else's money other than yours. He but can't it is. help himself, Brandon. Anyway, I can't stop. It's, can't it's close himself. to April 15th. This stuff just comes out. I can't stop it. But the, anyway, okay, so, okay, okay. so, so 400,000 400, is going to stupid government. <laughs> 
10 percent's going to your local church to tithe and other giving would come out of the 50 so i would add a, okay. some other percentage out of that other 50 how are you going to break down that other 50 percent uh towards investing further in or, you know investing uh further generosity and enjoyment or lifestyle adjustment okay Correct. and so if you put uh Ten percent on lifestyle adjustment. You've got a hundred thousand dollars to blow, and have fun with. Go on a trip, buy a car, or whatever. And if and that would leave you forty percent for giving and for investing. If you put another ten on additional giving, I'm just making these numbers up. There's not a wrong number, a right number. Okay. Then you'd have another hundred thousand to give, and that would leave you with three hundred thousand invested out of that particular million dollars. If it's 10 million, it's going to be 10 times that much, okay? But so you look at percentages and lay those out ahead of time, and then that tells you as you can sit down with your investment folk and go, I'm getting ready to bring you a check for this to invest. Let's talk about what we're going to do with it. And then you can start talking about what ministries or charities we want to support with this money. Um, and then you start putting boundaries, as you said, on that to be a wise investor into God's kingdom with ministries and charities. So you right. don't want to, you know, like you said, I'm not going to, I don't want to put this in a bad place. And so. But you can't keep some for an individual, right? Yeah, if, you can do if some individual comes giving, up, but, you but, know, and you want to yeah. buy someone a car or something, you know what I mean? You're able to. Yeah, you to can do, do that, that too. too. But of course, you know, uh, tax deductible is going to be going to. That's true. Yeah. If you, if, if you're concerned about that at all, is going to be going to a 501 C3, unless you form some kind of foundation. And I don't know how much money you're getting, but you're probably not in the foundation level yet. Um, but, um, it, cause it takes a bit of money to maintain that yeah. sucker. Brandon, I have a going. question for this specific amount of money. Is this kind of a one time, like, oh my gosh, this just happened. It probably will never happen again. Or is it, are you in a position career wise where this could be something that happens every three to four years? Do you know what I mean? Is it? It, it could happen more times over. Let's just say I got on the right bus and they put me on the right seat. So it all worked out well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So I think, especially with that, putting these habits in place, because as this comes up, yeah. you'll start to know, oh yeah, the, like it, it, it will start to flow more right as as you lay this foundation um what that's, ex I, yeah, what that's I, exciting what i didn't do when i f got the first one of these is i i was very intentional with everything except um i i just dumped the giving part in an account and then i had to clear it out by year end or i was going to get taxed on it and so i had to rush around at the end of the year and pick out some ministries to put it on and i did that like two years in a row and a guy who's a billionaire i was sitting with him he said you know y you would fire somebody if they managed your investments that way <laughs> you need to be better at investing god's money than that you need to be as careful on investing his money as you are investing the money for yourself and so you need to be doing due diligence on these ministries and checking them out and doing all this stuff and that is what led me because we were starting to have these events pretty regularly uh, to forming a foundation that Rachel's sister runs, the foundation, and she vets all these things now. But, uh, but at, at a minimum, you've just got to be thoughtful about who you're going to give it to. Because if you give $100,000 to a ministry that their whole budget is $100,000, you could screw them up. Yeah. I understand. And you know, or if they're misbehaving with the money, or they're usually not misbehaving. They're just incompetent sometimes. And, you know, yeah, and giving and you, a certain amount of money, you're right, I think to smaller ones where you're the big donor, and if you stop giving for whatever reason in the next two years that they go under, that brings them harm, right? So it is. It's being really thoughtful and wise about the amount of money you give to each. But that's the fun part, Brandon, too, is, yeah, yeah figuring out what do you guys love as a family? What are the things that you're like, oh, my gosh, we want to we wanna put our resources and our money towards this type of organization or that are doing, you know, it's doing clean water or rescuing kids out of trafficking or like, you know, you get to really figure out as a family, like, what are these things that we're passionate about? And that's, that's the exciting part about all of this. It can be so, it can be so helpful. It can be so, so helpful. We've had a lot of fun with it. This is The Ramsey Show.
Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Every Dollar is our world-class budgeting app that helps you manage money the Ramsey way. Helps you give every dollar an assignment, every dollar a mission, every dollar a name. And it works wherever you are, iOS or Android or online on your desktop. You can start every dollar for free and immediately see where you stand with your money. Get organized, personalize your budget, stop the overspending, start behaving. It's cool. Yeah. And new to every dollar, we're going to show you a long-term financial roadmap. Track your net worth, your debt-free date, your retirement date. Show you in your baby steps how you're doing and progressing. We're going to walk with you, proactively coach you to build wealth and reach your goals. This app is blowing up. Tens of millions of people using it. It's crazy how cool it is. So download the free app for iOS and Android or go to everydollar.com and get started on your desktop. We would love to have you part of the Every Dollar family. You can get started for free. Allison is with us in Los Angeles. Hi, Allison. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for taking my call today. Sure. What's up? So I, I'm 21 and I graduate uh, next month with a degree in finance. Good for you. And um, thank you. And so I've been dating my boyfriend now for um, almost a year. And, you know, as I'm graduating and as we've been talking about our life together, our future together, we have the idea of moving to Texas has come into mind. And so the idea kind of came into play because my boyfriend has a buddy out there that he could work with and make more money than what he's currently making. And I'm willing and open to the idea. However, I made it very, very clear to him when we started talking about the move that we both needed to have at least a couple thousand dollars saved up prior to the move. And I'm there. I have that money saved up. I'm pretty much ready to move um, after I graduate. And I've talked to him about potentially going and moving to Texas about one to two months before I do, because in the whole time that we've been together, I've never seen him work full time. He's not in school and he never went to college and he works about 20 hours a week right now um, as a personal trainer in his own business. And so I kind of threw that idea out there for him and he doesn't want to move out there without me because he thinks I won't follow him. But I genuinely believe that he doesn't want to move out there with me because he doesn't have the financial means to do so. And I think he wants me to be there with him so he can lean on me a little bit. Um, but I've been burned in the past by an ex-boyfriend in a similar situation and I lost thousands of dollars. And so I don't really know what to do. He tells me that his financial status is none of my business, but I think if we're moving in together, (laughs) it should be. (laughs) Uh, Warning, warning, warning. (laughs) I work 20 hours a week and my money's none of your business. (laughs) Warning, warning, warning. Mm. (laughs) The bells are going off in your head so loud that, that you can't even hardly speak around them. Aren't they? Yeah. You you have alarms going off all around you. You just described them to us very clearly. I know. Yeah. I know. It's and, just a hard and, it's a hard reality. It's a hard pill to swallow, the reality of, of, of what the situation is. But I think you know it, Allison. Yeah. And I just I've talked to him, you know, and, and this also just it, it impacts me a lot because, you know, as I said, I'm about to graduate and so I started looking for jobs out in Texas. But we're kind of at the mercy of, you know, when his friend says he can come and. He yeah. So the problem is, Allison, you're building your life around somebody, number one, that you're not married to. Right. I mean, you have no legal grounds on any level. And, you know, you've been burned in the past financially with relationships, as you said. And and so you're following somebody that there is no true commitment and no true legal binding of anything. Right. And so, um, I mean, that's red flag number one for me. And, and number two, yeah, there's, there's so many splinters off of the situation that if I were your friends and sitting here, I would say, Allison, what's best, what's best for Allison? What's best for Allison? And that would be a different question if you guys were married, what's best for you guys as a couple, but you're not. And so being, having that level of independence for you, Allison, to be able to say, what is best for me? And is it moving to a place that you don't have a job right now? Uh, following a guy who won't even let you into his finances, who hasn't had a pattern of doing well financially or work-wise because somebody of his X, Y, and Z, 
it sounds like a disaster. It really does. And so, uh, Allison, you are um, very wise for 21 years old because you've actually you. analyzed this pretty carefully. You, you've got all the key points in the decision. What you're, what, what's hurting is, is that it's leading you to a conclusion that, that is painful. I, if you I are, like if you had a, a little sister, do you have a little sister? Yes, I do. How old is she? She's 12. Okay. So she's 21 and you're now 30 and she comes and gives you this scenario. What are you going to tell I her? I would tell her not to do it. Okay. Absolutely not to right. do it. All right. But the thing is, I, I'm in this place where I am worried that, because he treats me so wonderfully, and I'm worried that I'm never going to find no, somebody. I, I, no. He, do, he actually doesn't treat you wonderfully. If he was working like 60 hours a week, making $100,000 a year, showering you with gifts and paying for everything and asking you to marry him so that he can make a lifelong commitment to you, and then, honey, let's go off to Texas and make a wonderful life, that's treating you wonderfully. Not come over here so I can lean on you because I don't work much. Yeah. That's not treating you wonderfully. It's not the definition of wonderful. You would tell your little sister that. All I'm telling yeah, you is right. what you've already told me. I don't really yeah. know what's going on except what you told me. But I can tell you this. I have had these situations over the years where everything in my brain is telling me not to do something, but my heart is pushing me forward anyway. And it all, I always look back and go, ouch. So there's a proverb, Proverbs 27, 12. It says, I just looked it up because I couldn't remember exactly where it was while we were talking. And I, it's a, a, there's actually a book been written on it by Andy Stanley. But he says, a wise person sees danger ahead and avoids it. But a foolish person keeps going and gets into trouble. And so, yeah. it, 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 no kidding. You know, I mean, that's, you know, like the Proverbs kind of obvious. And, and But it, it's, I've at times gone ahead anyway, even though I knew down in my, you, you, down inside of you, you know, your spirit is telling you, you're, the, the better parts of Allison are speaking to you. And you're saying, this guy's not yet eligible for a life partner. He hasn't earned the right for someone as good as Allison yet he may be a sweet guy but there's a lot of lazy guys that are sweet yeah so what do you suggest i do i mean i we come from very very different financial backgrounds my parents are immigrants and they didn't get the opportunity to go to college and they worked so hard to be where they are today you know they so your family is a family of work ethic yes yeah and and you are you're a person who works yes Tell him that. Yes, I have two Tell jobs. him that. Say, I can't go with you until I see some financial responsibility and some work ethic. And his codependence on you, not just financially, but the idea that if he moves first and you may not follow and that scares him, that's not strength either, right? Yeah. There, that, that, there's an so, emotional codependence there as well, Allison. So and let me just say too, and, and I, you would say this to your sister if you were 30 and she was 21, he's not the only one. Oh, God. He's not the only one, Allison. I promise you. You're 21. I promise you. And unless he There's... changes, he's not the one either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because he's not. He's Don't. not. He's not. You've not described to someone, us to someone, you've not described to us someone that is worthy of you. That's right. Yeah. And when you limit options and you think this is it, this is it. If I if I don't choose him, I'm never going to get married. You know, or so, you know, you, you start to lose the ability to make critical, rational decisions with your life. And um, and I just want to tell you, there's more out there. And you can choose to stay in the relationship. And he goes to Texas, and you guys work on it. And maybe something changes. But as of now, I would not move to Texas. A hundred percent.
Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. We invite you, if you're in the Nashville or Franklin, Tennessee, which is just south of Nashville area, stop by our offices anytime. We'd love to have you. We do the show from 1 to 4 Central Time, Monday through Friday. There'll be two of us, Ramsey personality, sitting here doing this exact thing. And uh, you can come sit in the lobby, and uh, we make homemade cookies so it smells like Mama's Kitchen, and they're free to you, and we make coffee, and it's free to you and people come and sit and watch the show we have no idea why they do that except it's free and so and they're cheap they're cheap people sitting out there right now y'all are cheap. no they're so great <laughs> they're wonderful cheap people that's right it's free entertainment it's not great entertainment but it's free <laughs> and so <laughs> we love you we're glad you're here uh and on the on the debt-free stage which is in that lobby sam is with us hey sam how are you hi <laughs> I'm really excited and also nervous. We're also excited to have you here. And you no need to be nervous. We've never lost a patient. Okay. So where, where do you live? I live in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Wow. Welcome to Nashville. So good yeah. to have you. Thank you. And how much debt has Sam paid off? Um, $163,000. Yeah. Nice. And how long did that take you? 29 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Um, I started at 53000 and ended up at 155000 Oh wow. my gosh. What do you do for a living? I am a researcher. Okay. And how'd you kick your income so hard? Um, so I actually, the reason why I started or the reason I had a whole bunch of debt was because I have three degrees and my first job was kind of like an intern. So ah, I was only earning 53000 okay. and then... So what are your degrees in? Um, I have a a bachelor's degree, a master's in public health, and then a doctorate in public health. Wow. Wow. What do you do for a living? Um, a researcher. Pub- yeah, but- public health researcher. Okay, yes. okay, very And was cool. that all the 163000 133 with student loans. Okay. What was yeah. the other 30? Um, a car that I bought myself for graduating. <laughs> oh, we celebrated. Yes. I got 130,000 in debt. I'm going to celebrate with exactly. another 30. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Okay, so what happened? How'd you find this Ramsey people stuff and start doing this stuff 29 months ago? Uh, the-, the man over here. The uh, man over uh, here. Oh, there he is. Um, yeah, so <laughs> when we first started dating, I would say maybe like four months into our relationship, he said, sat me down and started talking about finances and I do not talk about finances. I'm not from a family that talks about it. And he asked me how much debt I had and I was like, okay, this is, <laughs> these are not the questions. This guy's nosy. <laughs> yeah. He's nosy. Um, and so I told him how much I had in student loan debt and he was like, oh, I like, he was debt free. He's like, I'm not prepared to really be married into debt. And wow. I was like, okay, well, clearly what you're telling me is you don't want to be married because there's no way I can pay off. <laughs> <laughs> all that money um and he introduced me to um to dave ramsey and the baby steps and i just i was like okay if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna actually do this wow. so i just from that conversation i realized i needed to get a higher paying job i left my job at a university um found another job and uh started working two jobs to be able to pay off the debt Wow. wow. Okay, and I think I may see a ring. Yes. On the, okay, so, <laughs> so did he it say, worked. Did he say it yeah, worked. the traction's going, so I'm going to propose? Oh, my, okay, so after I paid off my debt that weekend, we went to celebrate paying off my debt, and he proposed, so. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, yeah, so, so you're so you're newly engaged. Newly engaged, yeah. Man, he's hardcore. He is he hardcore. Is hardcore. <laughs> I wish we had another microphone. I would I would want to interview him. I'm like, so many questions. Was it really yeah. that? No, that's. So great, though. Good for you. And honestly, wow. just doing it for yourself. I'm like, yes, that's amazing. Yes. And to think that you went from uh, this, this will never be paid off. What are you talking about? Two in a little over two years. It's yes. really intense. It was uh, a lot of sacrifices. Very intense. Um, I didn't realize like the emotional toll that mm-hmm. paying off my debt would actually have. Um, what do but, you mean? So I I assumed like, you know, you click the submit button on your payments and you just keep it pushing. Um, but kn- knowing like the sacrifices that you have to make when it comes to saying no to friends and family. Mm-hmm. Um, I also moved from Philadelphia to a smaller town mm-hmm. um, to lower my cost of living and being away from friends and family mm-hmm. in Philadelphia was also a little bit isolating mm-hmm. um, throughout the process. But I mean, 
the emotions of like, okay, this, I need to get this done. And I'm a very get things done girl. So um, right when I set my mind to it, I was like, okay. So you didn't, you didn't, uh, you're, you're such an intellectual academic type with your PhD that you thought this was an intellectual exercise. Oh and then gosh, when you yes. hit the submit button, that was you it. suddenly realized freedom is not an intellectual exercise. No. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Wow. I thought it was just, you know, you make your payment, you keep it pushing, but that's um, pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That's a beautiful picture. I like that. Very cool. You're amazing. Great. Thank great. You. What a great Thank smile you. she's got. <laughs> I know. So beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Oh. Okay. So when you think back over those two years, what was like the biggest thing that really helped you on this journey? If someone's listening right now, what would you tell them? Like here are one or two things that you have to do in order to do it in this this intensely because yeah, it's you, impressive. You went for it. Yeah. Yeah, I think the motivation for my now fiance, then boyfriend um, was very helpful. I think uh, you have to be very intentional. I, I think doing it like half piecing things together is not going to get it done there were a lot of times where i'm like okay i want to kind of quit but knowing that i am intentional i put a, together a budget i had spreadsheets of how long it would take me what my payments would be every single month making sure i'm like checking it off like i mm. made this payment i made this payment and then like celebrating the small wins i think was really important because if i was just okay i got the car out the way i got this loan out the way and just kept on going it would have been exhausting and just yeah. being able to be like okay i had this five thousand dollar loan i just paid off yay okay totally. <laughs> let's move on to the ten thousand let's move on to the fifteen thousand um and then at the very end my i had a hundred and seven thousand dollars in federal loans and that was probably the hardest Oof. one to pay off because it was all together but i had celebrated so many of my small wins and like the steps that it kind of was like oh you did that already yeah. so yeah. what is this like let's do this it's, it's just a hundred well not just a hundred <laughs> but yeah. it's just a hundred yeah. yeah 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 way to go way Thanks. to go you're right. amazing what a hero thank you so uh when you graduated from high school were you valedictorian Oh, no, no, no. no? Um, I am an accidental academic. I had no intention of even, honestly, going to undergrad for my um, college degree. I was like, okay, I graduated high school. That's good. Um, and I decided to get my undergrad degree. I stumbled into my master's degree, and someone encouraged me to go for my PhD. So that was not the path I envisioned at all wow. for myself and um, ended up doing all of it so I think for I think that, that that was kind of how I viewed a lot of the debt-free payments like I had overcome so much just to get to where I was and I was like oh okay I could definitely do mm. this I've done one, one I've more done hurdle. stuff exactly yeah yep. one more hurdle yep. I, can, mm -hmm. I did this I mean I got a PhD I got a master's I can I can yes. knock out a little bit of debt a little bit of debt <laughs> I can do it you're, you're amazing thank you well so done. great did you Very do well. any side hustles to up the income during it or did you was yeah. it mostly just salary yeah it was actually Actually, it was all of it with salary. Um, so I was working two jobs at the time. Oh, wow. I um, was I had a job on the West Coast and a job on the East Coast. I would wake up early, do my job on the East Coast, then start my job on the West Coast to be able to like juggle both of the the different jobs. And I I was very excited when I paid off my debt because like turned in my two week notice. I was like I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so great. Do you have a wedding date? Yes, next year October twenty fourth, twenty twenty five. Okay. I love it. We're so excited. Thank you. Guys. you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Proud of yeah. you. I know he is obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And, uh, who who else was cheering you on? Um, I honestly, I think I was introducing my friends to this. So it wasn't necessary. It was like education and bringing people into yeah. the fold. Um, a, I, a lot of my friends also have a lot of student loans. So yeah. having conversations with them about like my journey, the importance of paying it off. And I was able to have those type of conversations and get them to a place where they wanted to also start paying off their debt, which is really exciting. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Sam from Allentown. She's amazing. One hundred sixty three thousand. <laughs> And paid off in 29 months, making 53 to 155. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt free. <laughs> yeah! Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. That's what a hero looks like. This is the Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Mary Kay Ash said, a mediocre idea that generates enthusiasm will go further than a great idea that inspires no one. Austin is with us in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Hi, Austin. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you today? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, I've got a, I got a question. Um, I'm recently married. I got married in November. Congratulations. And thank you. Um, we have one daughter. Um, she just turned two, actually, a couple weeks ago. And I'm stuck in a hard place right now. Um, we're... We had a rollover loan that rolled over for an auto car. Um, so I have a 2015 Jeep that, I'm, that I pay like $920 a month on. Um, on top of that, we have some credit card debt, and we've hit a rock in a hard place. Um, you know, I'm 23. She's 23 with a two-year-old daughter. And, I mean, as a... After doing our taxes this year, I really sat down and I looked because I do my own taxes. That's one thing that my parents taught me before I moved out. Um, so I did my own taxes and combined the two of us, we made like 94000 for the year. And me and her have absolutely nothing to show for it besides our little family and our daughter. And, and it's real frustrating because I'm not getting anywhere and I need to know what I need to do differently. Mm. Okay, so for you guys, you, the debt itself, how much do you owe on the car total? I know you told us the car payment, but what do you owe total? Sure. So I have 38000 that we owe on it yet, and it's a 2015 with 140,000 miles on it. And, and how did that end up being a $38,000 loan? So the... <laughs> I personally sold my personal vehicle when I got my job because I have a company vehicle. So I eliminated eliminated my car payment period. Well, so this was all before we had our daughter. So we lived together since we've been 18, 17 at that. Um, we've been living together since we were 17. We dated for five years and we were kind of on that young and dumb stage. So our money spending was, was you know, a snap of the finger we did what we wanted when sure. we wanted. We had How no did you buy a car money. for $38,000? So we have a good relationship built with our bank. She had rolled her first car. So then she had to roll the money from her first car. I mean, car. she rolled it. You mean she, turned, she, she wrecked it? Correct, yes. Okay, and so she got a check for totaling the car, right? Correct, but it didn't pay off the loan because it wasn't worth that. Oh, okay. So, so she didn't have gap. Okay. And so how much correct. was she how much was she in the hole on that? So I think they rolled like three or four thousand over into the car she had. And then once that we found out we were pregnant and we had the child, we turned that car into an SUV for the space. And that's where the rollover rolled again so then it turned into so it's basically three car pay, three cars time. three car loans correct into so, this correct. car yeah. negative equity and that's how you end up with a car that's worth a oh, fourth man. of what you owe on it yeah okay all right so yeah. it, it, it sounds like you got a great grand. relationship with your bank they screw you pretty regularly <laughs> <laughs> well so we think it's a good relationship because i can make that phone call and say hey you know yeah and they just keep money. loaning you money and, <laughs> and just, they hold- completely messed you over they're just wonderful to you dude okay so austin, what, snake bites me what, i just yeah, i yeah. love it i love it do it again <laughs> okay what uh what other debt austin is there there's the car what else yep I was a firm believer in no credit cards. We got out on our own. I am now renting a house for us. We moved out of her mom and dad's house. Okay. Do you? Have, um, is there any other debt? Moved, I, I had applied for three credit building credit cards because I have so four here, here, credit cards. Let's just stop. Let's just stop. Okay. You make ninety four thousand dollars a year. You guys have no idea where it's going. We need to start with that. And so let's put you on the Every Dollar app. I'm going to give it to you. 
Okay. Okay. And, and you guys, the two of you are going to sit down tonight, use that app. We'll, we'll line you up with it on the phone and you all sit down and lay out a budget and tell every dollar of your income this month before it comes in what to do. So it's already scheduled. Every dollar is already scheduled out for the whole month. And you won't get to the end of the year and go, where the crap did 94000 goes? Because you're going to tell it what to do before it leaves. That's going to change your life. And the first thing you're going to tell it what to do is save $1,000. The second thing you're going to tell it what to do is start paying off your debts as fast as you possibly can. And that means you're going to stay out of restaurants. You cut guys up are the gonna, credit cards. You're going to cut up your credit cards, and it means you're going to quit buying crap you can't afford. And your young and dumb, as you put it, season is over. Now you're young and smart. Mm-hmm. Ready to go. Ready, set, go. I'm also going to plug you into our class, which 10 million people have been through, Austin. It's called Financial Peace University. I'm going to give it to you if you promise me you and your young little new wife will watch every stinking lesson and do everything I tell you to do. If you do, you'll get out of debt and become wealthy and never again make 94000 and wonder where it went. Is that Does that sound good to you? Yes, please. I, I appreciate it. I've been listening to your show all day. Eight hours of work in my earbuds listening to okay. your guys' podcast all day today. You, you can do this. And Austin, there's, there, I've, been on, I've been on hold for two hours. Yeah, and Austin, <laughs> just know that there is hope in this. I'm like, there's people literally all over the country and even the world that have started exactly where you are. You're normal. You are literally the epitome of normal in America, living paycheck to paycheck, making good money and having nothing to show for it, which are your words. I mean, that's literally you. And there is just a systematic plan and you have to do it specifically, like so intensely, every single step in the right order. I think coming to this conclusion, which I feel like you're at because you called, is saying what I've done and what I have chosen to do with money has not worked. And when you have that moment to say, what I've done isn't working, I'm going to have to do something totally different. And even if it feels uncomfortable, even if there's things in the plan that you're like, oh, well, we're going to kind of do this this way. No. Say, us, we don't know what we're doing. So we're going to follow a proven plan. And when you become so laser focused in this, Austin, you're going to look up in, you know, months, number one, once you start doing a budget and feel in control, but the amount of progress you guys can make in the next year or two, because it'll be a marathon, okay? It's gonna, it's not gonna just change overnight. It's a marathon in this, but you're gonna start seeing that progress. You really, really are, but you have to be committed to the actual plan. And I think that's where people get in trouble a lot is they try to do their own thing in the midst of trying to you know, do it. So when you guys both lock arms, just be fully committed in this, and you really will start seeing progress. Yeah, she, she's exactly right. Normal in America, 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck with too much month left at the end of the money. Credit card debt, car leases, whole life insurance, timeshares, and a student loan that's been around so long they think it's a pet. That's normal in America. Let's just be real clear. Normal sucks. You don't want to be normal. Normal's awful. The last thing you want to be when normal is failing is normal. And Austin, you're you're just one of many millions of people that live this way. And, and the great news is what Rachel said is true. You can just decide to change. Ta-da! Today. You can do it at 21, you can do it at 31, you can do it at 41, you can do it at 51, you can even do it at 71. People do it all the time. When what you're doing isn't working, you need to change. And it's the coolest thing happened. So we're going to help you, brother. And you call us back if you've got questions along the way, and don't you deviate one iota from what we're telling you to do. Do it exactly. Doesn't give us any extra money when you do. It gives you extra money when you do. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus.